hi. I'm gonna call it the elephant in the room. I've been pretty nervous. I've been shaking like a deer with withdrawals in the back room, and I took a little nap. But I'm coming out here regardless, because I do stand-up comedy, and I'm a stand-up. But you guys shouldn't take advice from me. I know a lot of people out there were giving like really smart advice. A lot of these people are very knowledgeable. I'm 21, I'm not. I'm a mess. If you guys saw the way I lived, you would have me locked up. I don't live like a pretty girl. I live like a raccoon that just went through a divorce. My room is so messy. And like, I don't have any practical skills because I went to a theater high school. And what that means is I have no idea how to do my taxes, but I can cry in a circle with my peers really well. The irrigation system on my face is working really well. And I know myself, I know myself well because I went to feeling school instead of real school. And I know that there are two things in life that I shouldn't have, and that is a gun and a baby. <laughs> and for whatever reason, the government seems intent on me having both. <laughs> and it's not a good idea. I, I, don't, I don't want it. I use, look, it's better for everyone if I just don't. I can't vouch for whatever gremlin comes out of my loins. I don't know what it's gonna do. You can't put it back. Moms will say you can put it back. They'll say like, hey, uh, don't talk to me like that because I could put you right back where you came from. I put you into this world, I could take you out. And it's like, yeah, anyone could. There's a name for that, it's called murder. <laughs> but you would be in trouble, you would still go to jail. The, the, the judge wouldn't be like, oh, oh, you made that one? All right, yeah. Go ahead, shoot it out of a cannon if you want, it's yours. No, once it's out, it's out for good. And that's scary. Because I don't think my body is fit to have a kid. Like, I've poisoned my body a lot, you guys. Every day of adult life, Tide Pods look a little more tasty. And one day I might succumb. And look, I don't have the gene pool that I think needs to be passed on. My bones, by all assumption, are probably hollow. I don't need a baby. This isn't Bridgerton. I don't need an heir. I don't need a successor to pass all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards on to. Those can be lost to the winds of time, and I don't think anybody's gonna care. And I see some people my age, 21-year-olds, 21-year-olds having babies, and I don't think they want the babies. Like, they're posting them on Instagram, sure, with a nice caption and everything, but I know they don't love them because they are posting raw, unfiltered images of their babies. <laughs> they ha Jessica, you have time to facetune your face, facetune out your nose to where you look like Voldemort. But you're posting your little baby on Instagram looking that red? It looks like raw chicken. You're not concerned about that? It looks like chewed up gum. And I'm not trying to be mean. It's just, I am mean. <laughs> like, I don't think I had the best example. Like, I don't think I was a good kid growing up. And not to brag, but 50% of my parents still do talk to me, so. <laughs> Came out of that pretty well. But me and my dad had a pretty fraught relationship. He forgot me at SeaWorld, twice. How does one do that twice? How does one make SeaWorld more unethical? You forget a kid in the parking lot. My dad would gander at a dolphin for too long and forget he had offspring. And I remember my mom once was like, okay, you gotta be nicer to the little one. I was the little one. You gotta take her to the father-daughter dance because dance solves all conflicts, as we learned via West Side Story. And so he drove me to the father-daughter dance. And I got to see all my friends with their good dads. Their good dads who would do this real chivalrous thing where they'd go up to their daughter and they'd be like, excuse me, madam, may I have this dance? It's a sweet sentiment, but like, who was your competition there? It's the father-daughter dance. No one is going to the father-daughter dance stag. And if they are, that is a serious problem. I hate the idea of some guy walking up to my dad in the middle of like a Taylor Swift ballad and tapping him and being like, excuse me, could I cut in? That's terrifying, that's messed up. And I've seen my fair share of messed up stuff, believe it or not, I was a Hooters waitress for two weeks. And my mother was so disappointed with my lack of follow through. I couldn't have stuck it out longer. And I remember what broke me. I was, I was waiting one day, and I was in the room with the back and the girls. And this guy came in, and they got real excited. They were like, oh my god, Rhea, he ordered the crab. And look, I don't know if there are any perverts in the house. No, all right. But if you are, you'd know that the crab at Hooters is $50. 
$50, that's like two chapsticks from Sephora. That's a lot of money. And like, if they spend those $50, they might tip more, and money's fun. It can be used to buy goods and services. I don't need to explain this. So we were all really excited, because nothing excites a gaggle of women more than the prospect of a man with crabs. And they said, Rhea, go out, talk to him. His name's Dirty Gary, go have fun. And me, being 18 and an idiot, was like, all right, <laughs> Dirty Gary. There's probably not a reason he has that name. That's probably his government name. <laughs> and so I sauntered up to him. I pulled out a chair and I straddled it like a really cool substitute teacher. And we start talking. And the first thing he says to me, I'll never forget, he says, um, you remind me of my granddaughter. Which is what a woman wants to hear when her goods are out. But he was a very white man, so like good for him for adapting, I guess. What a gentleman. And we're talking and he's taking an interest in me. He's like, so what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, well, I'm here, so who cares? You know, he wasn't bad looking either. He looked like George Clooney. A lot of you guys like George Clooney? He looked like George Clooney if George Clooney was made exclusively out of butter and left in the sun for a few days. And then I realized this whole conversation's a bit about me, how solipsistic of me. What about Dirty Gary? What's he into? What are his likes, his dreams? Why is he named Dirty Gary? So many questions. And so when he asked me, you want to see what I'm into? I was like, sure, Dirty Gary, I'd love to. I'm sure it's not going to be scarring at all. I'm sure it's going to be something wholesome like a collection of Beanie Babies. And he slides over his phone to me, and I pick it up, and I scroll, and it's 10 to 15 photos of my coworkers with tape over their mouths and their hands tied up. And he says, and I won't forget this, he says, uh, so for $40, could I tie you up and take some photographs? Don't worry, don't worry, it doesn't have to be nothing creepy. We don't got to go to a motel. We can do it in the back of my van. I didn't know what to say to that. I would have done it for free. <laughs> People are getting paid for this? I've been paying for the rope out of pocket. No, it, honestly, I got scared. I got up, I ran back to the girls. I was like, guys, no one was gonna warn me about that. And they were like, oh yeah, that's just Gary. They didn't say dirty this time. That's just Gary, that's his little thing. Little thing. Little thing. I'm sorry, I'm not one to shame people for what they're into, but to have it tied to a brand is so strange. That's like if one of you guys was like, I was into librarians, but only the ones from Barnes and Noble. The rest of them I don't care about. I think some guys don't know what women want. And I know this because I live across from a frat house. And they're trying to reform their image because they've been dubbed the creepy frat house, which is, you know, an oxymoron. But um, they're trying to do, it's so interesting to watch a bunch of half drunk boys try to do PR so they can continue to live in a rat infested house with sticky floors. Why do the floors have to be sticky? You know, as a kid, I thought college parties would be people were breaking down and doing the worm on the floor. It's, it's not that at all, actually. <laughs> you can't do the worm in a frat house. You would stick to the floors. And then you would be trampled like Mufasa from The Lion King. Like, people at frat parties, I don't know what they did in your guys' time, maybe the sock hop. In my time, they do penguin dancing. <laughs> penguin dancing is when the girl's in front, the guy's in back, and they kind of just waddle around in a circle to a Drake song. It looks real dumb, and I don't know what the girl's getting out of it. She's kind of just swiffering the front of the guy's khakis with her bottom. And it makes me understand the people in the footloose town that are like, kids my age shouldn't dance. I agree, we should not be dancing. And these guys, they, they're trying to show that they respect women now, so they've hung up a picture of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Don't have the nerve to tell them that she's dead. But, and every time they institute a rule, every time a woman walks into their frat house, everyone has to bow to her like it's the Regency era. I've never thought a guy was less creepy after he bowed to me, by the way. That is such a weird move. And also, it's not like they're dressed like gentlemen. They're wearing cargo shorts, so anyone behind them is just getting a full crack shot. <sighs> it's just, it's so weird being here. I was texting my friend before this saying, I'm so nervous, I'm so scared. I've had this friend since I was six years old, guys. Her name's Summer, and she's my best friend in the whole world. And I remember when I was six, I was a Hindu, which what is religion to a six-year-old? I was worshiping Hannah Montana, which is like two people. I didn't have room on my roster for God, but I was on paper a Hindu. And I don't remember much about Hinduism, but I do remember the words karma and dharma. That basically means if you do good in life, if you are a good person, you get promoted. You get to be like, I don't know, a man. And if you do bad... <laughs> If you're bad, you have to be a lizard. 
I'm sure there's more nuance there, but I don't really remember. Uh, and I remember when I met her, she was a Christian. And I, I remember the first word she said to me. She said, oh, you're a Hindu? Oh, well, that means you're going to hell. <laughs> Which is an insane thing for a six-year-old to say to another six-year-old. But she belonged to one of those mega churches. They gave free milkshakes, way too many hugs. They had a mechanical bull. Never have I been reading scripture and thought this would be better on a mechanical bull. <laughs> but she belonged to a church that said anyone who's not baptized is going to hell. And anyone who is baptized can baptize anybody, even if they're six. What this meant for me was I was getting dunked often. She was trying to save my soul and I lived in Florida. I was around a lot of water. She had a lot of opportunities. <laughs> It was called a gorilla baptism. It's when you're not ready for it and they just dunk you. And like, guys, I've been baptized 27 times. That's too many times. In kiddie pools, water fountain, lakes, ravines, rivers, one slip and slide, which by the way is really embarrassing. Slip and slides are 90% pee. Okay, that's where it, <laughs> that's the line. No, it's, it, you realize in bullying movies, you know how in 90s movies you see the bully dunking the nerd's head in the water? He's not being a bully, he's just trying to save him from eternal damnation. It's so sweet. Autumn and I, oh, Summer and I, my friend. You gotta use pseudonyms, guys. <laughs> Summer and I, we were the best of friends, and I forgave her. I still do. You do stupid things as a kid. When I was eight, I wanted to learn about the birds and the bees. That's all I wanted to learn about. And I asked my parents, I said, could you tell me? And they said, no, but Santa Claus isn't real. And I said, that's not what I asked. <laughs> so I had to take matters into my own hands. So I kidnapped two lizards. Because we were in Florida, we had an excess of lizards. And then I took Tupperware. I lived in an Indian family. We had a Tupperware. I put the lizards in the Tupperware, punched, uh, punched two holes in it, and I waited for them to, I don't know, make love. <laughs> And I, I left them there for two days. I forgot about them, to be honest. Trix came out with a new push-up yogurt, and I was eight, and I was busy. And when I checked back in, it was like a scene from Macbeth. They had ripped each other's heads clean off. And I was like, wow. That's just, how did they do that? That was coordinated. They don't have posable thumbs. And I went to my brother, and I was like, hey, is, it, is, this, is this the meaning of life? Is this how it happens? And he said, no. No, you dullard. No, those are two male lizards. That's the first and only thing they teach you in a Florida education system, how to identify a male lizard. And it taught me something that day, people do not choose to be gay. Because I gave those lizards a choice and they chose cold hard murder instead. <laughs> I was on a bus with uh, Summer and they split us up into two sides. Boys on one side, girls on one side. They were afraid that us 12 year olds would do what those lizards wouldn't do and procreate which is not what's on tw every 12 year old's mind. But me and Autumn were on the side. We would romantically kiss each other, which <laughs> uh, it wasn't for any gay reason. Um, you know, we just wanted to taste each other's teeth. And yes, we are both homosexuals now. <laughs> she lives with her girlfriend and I'm alone. And do not worry if you're a homophobic person in the audience who doesn't like gay people. I'm non-practicing. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm gonna sing a little song about my generation, which is Gen Z, and I don't know if you guys know anything about us. Um, we're known for not having jobs, correct? Um, taking our shoes off in airports, because we have to. Um, we're known for whippets, which I've never tried those, but I desperately want to. <laughs> and we're known for Instagram. And on Instagram, a pretty girl could go ahead and sell me anything. If I see a pretty girl, I'm like, oh yeah, I wanna become her. Instagram butt models are how everyone's marketing everything nowadays. I miss when the only butt models were the Charmin Bears. What simpler times those were. Hey, girly pops, thanks for being my fans. I want you to know how grateful I am that you all follow me on Instagram. I'll try to give back in any way that I can. I know that girls have insecurity put on by the media industry in a world so full of scrutiny. How do you look in the mirror and like what you see? Well, for me, it's easy. Supplements, buy my supplements, I am selling them on my storefront. Buy my supplements, they'll make you beautiful, the kind of girl that every guy wants. But 
but look, this isn't just about getting dudes. This is about you ladies loving you for you. I need to take a little hiatus. I will be right back. <laughs> All right, where was I? Self-love, yeah. <laughs> Supplements, you could look just like me. A completely natural beauty. And okay, I noticed that some of you guys are coming for me. You're accusing me of plastic surgery. Okay, rude, <laughs> like that's not cool. Not very women supporting women of you. I just think that we should believe women when they tell us to buy their supplements. Buy my supplements, but please don't check the back. It's nothing sketchy, nothing unhealthy, but it's made from the genitals of several yaks. No, that's not animal cruelty. The yaks give up their genitals willingly. So this is all done ethically in the name of women's beauty. All right, I am noting, I'm noticing that my community has gotten like really toxic lately. So I'm gonna be taking a six to eight month hiatus for my mental health. And when I come back, y'all better be nicer. Oh, I swear to God. <laughs> I'll never tell the truth I'll disillusion the youth They all wanna look like I do And as a kid, beauty was my last care But now I'm mostly plastic when I'm dead in my casket They'll donate my body to Tupperware <sighs> oh, I'm getting a call from my manager, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm selling them, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Supplements, guys, seriously, my manager's chest might kill me. Trade feminism for capitalism, beauty is a prison. Don't you want your femininity? It's only $300 monthly. This is the price for vanity. And don't you want to be pretty? Doesn't every girl want to be pretty? Oh. It's so ugly to be this pretty. <laughs> <laughs>